moved this mound in the air when we're in the sanctuary. <coughs> but listen to a child when a child says it. It's unbelievable. Such a simple prayer that was given to us by the Master himself when he uh, was asked by his disciples, Lord, teach us to pray. Simple words that cover every human need in the universe. I'm not into hiking. My legs are too short. <laughs> but I do like the mountains and I like the high country. I guess one of my goals is to go where Max Licato went on this little story that he tells in the mountains of Colorado. Not to hike, but to ride a horse. Time to take him a fly rod with me. To a place it's hard to get to because you know there'd be fish there. But Max tells a story about going to the high country and he, one of his little daughters was four years old, and I can't imagine hiking with a four-year-old. <laughs> and he said she stumbled so badly that finally she fell and bruised her knee, and then she had to be carried and ridden on his back going up the, the mountains to the high country. And he tells this story about a view All of us need help sometimes going up the steep hills. The journey gets very steep, so steep that some of us give up or want to give up. Some stop climbing, some sit down. They're still near the trail but aren't on it. They haven't abandoned the trip, but they haven't continued it. So the pilgrim moves on while the settler settles. Settles for sameness, settles for safety, settles for snowdrifts. Max says, I hope you don't do that. But if you do, I hope you don't scorn the pilgrim who calls you back to the journey. It's worth it to keep moving. Who was it? Was it Satchel Page Dick that said you got to keep moving, otherwise something's liable to catch up with you. Why did Satchel Page don't look back? Don't look back, something might be catching up with you. <laughs> Nothing puts power in the journey like a vision of the mountaintop. Listen to this. We've talked about Revelation some, but not enough because I don't understand it enough. But I understand this, Revelation 21. If you got your Bibles, turn with me. <coughs> Talking about looking at the high country. This is as high as it gets. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. <coughs> for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I'm making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, to the th
thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage. And I will be his God, and he will be my son. That reminds me of another verse in the New Testament. It said, they that endure to the end. Keep on going. Keep on trusting. And know that the goal we pursue, <coughs> our eternal life with our Savior, is a worthy one. Here's a little scene from the writer of Hebrews. Often wonder why we don't know who wrote Hebrews. But we don't. The scholars don't. They got an assumption. But one day, when I get on that mountaintop, I want to go to the writer of Hebrews. And I want to say thank you for my favorite verse in all of the New Testament. <laughs> because it was a source of great strength. said before and endured the cross despised the shame and sat down at the throne of God. He says when we reach the mountain we will have come to the city of the living God to thousands of angels gathered together with joy to the meeting of God's firstborn children whose names are written in heaven to God the judge of all people to the spirits of good people who have been made perfect, to Jesus, the one who brought the new agreement from God to his people, to the sprinkled blood that has a better message than the blood of Abel. What a mountain it'll be. Won't it be great to see the angels, to finally know what they look like and who they are, to hear them tell of the times they were at our side, and even in our house. <coughs> to gaze in the face of our Father, to feel the Father's gaze upon us, neither will ever cease. He'll do what He promised He would. He said, I'll make all things new. I'll restore what was taken. I'll restore your years drooped on crutches and trapped in wheelchairs. I'll restore the smiles <coughs> faded by hurt. I'll repay the symphonies unheard by deaf ears. I'll replay them. And the sunsets, I'll restore them. Those that are unseen by blind eyes. The mute will sing. The poor will feast. The wounds will heal. I'll make all things new. I'll restore all child snatched by disease will run to your arms. The freedom lost to oppression will dance in your heart. The peace of a pure heart will be my gift to you. I'll make all things new. New hope, new faith, and most of all new love. The love of which all other loves speak. <coughs> The love before which all other love pales. The love you have sought in a thousand ports and a thousand nights. This love of mine will be yours, says God. What a mountain. Jesus will be there. We've longed to see him. We finally will. It's interesting, Max says, what the the writer says we will see it's something that I hadn't even thought about, but I should have. He doesn't mention the face of Jesus, though we will see it. He doesn't refer to the voice of Jesus, though it will shout. He mentions a part.
part of Jesus that most of us wouldn't think of seeing. He says we'll see Jesus' blood. The crimson of the cross. The life liquid seeped from his forehead. Dripped from his hands. And flowed from his side. I don't like to see that. I don't like to think about it. I don't like to think about Good Friday because of what happened. And then I remember that had it not happened, and had Jesus not done what he did voluntarily, we as his children would never have known the great love that he has for us. Now, we're talking about the mountain right now, the view from the high country. <clears throat> to get there is similar to getting to Easter Sunday. We've got to go through the valley. And that's what I want us to do as we start the Lenten season. I'm going to try to prepare messages that deal with with the human feelings associated with the events leading to the cross and to Resurrection Sunday. And I don't know what I'm going to teach, but that's going to be my goal. <clears throat> because I want us to look at it from a human point of view. The doubt that the disciples have when Jesus starts telling them of what his future holds. I want us to look at how they must have felt when he, when they ask him the question, well, we can't understand that. And he tells them very simply, you can't understand what I'm going to tell you right now. He knew their hearts. He knew their shortcomings. He even knew one that would betray him, but he let him stay with him until just the right time. And then he says, go, my friend, and what you must do, do quickly. In other words, sell him. Betray him. And then I want us to look, and I start to say at the humanness on the cross, but I know he was human. summoned up the forgiveness in their heart to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And then I want us to think in the back of that valley, those sounds, I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today, I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I want us to go through this Lenten season and let's look at the events which change the course of history forever from a human standpoint. And let's develop that full faith and trust that we have as children of God who put our trust and our faith in His only Son and call Him our Savior. Then we'll get to the mountaintop. My, what a mountain. What a mountain. Believe me when I say it'll be worth it. No cost is too high. If you must pay a price to get there, pay it. No sacrifice is too much. If you must leave baggage on the trail, leave it. No loss will compare. Whatever it takes to get there, heaven's sake, do it. It'll be worth it, I promise. One view of the peak will justify the pain of the path. We may think we're climbing, but we're riding. We're riding on the back of the Father who saw us fall. Riding on the back of the Father who wants us to make it home. Father who doesn't get angry when we get weary. After all, he knows what it's like to climb a mountain. He climbed one for us. There's a beautiful 
song, and if you can find it, so I'm not going to sing it this morning. Probably won't sing it during the season. I'm going to ask Jimmy Underwood and Mark to sing it. I think Sandy Patty made it, kind of brought it to us. A little joy. The Via Dolorosa. How many of you heard it? You heard it, Doc? Ah. If you have a chance, listen to it sometime. I think of what must have gone through the, the minds of the people who saw the events that unfolded down the Via Dolorosa. Think about the humanity of a man in the crowd who hears the bark of a soldier said, you carry his cross. And he did. It's the same voice now. Not from the same soldier, but it's the same little voice that sometimes tugs at our heartstrings when he says, Angela, carry my cross, and you do and we say yes and we respond. And sometimes we just miss the mark. But our Father is still there. Reminding us that his love for us is greater than any miscue we can ever make. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's why it's so important to look back at those events. And one of the most beautiful scenes to me in the scripture is the conversation with the two thieves on either side of our Savior. <clears throat> One who takes the wrong approach. He looks selfishly at the Savior and says, if you are who you say you are, save yourself and save us. But then, on the other side of Jesus, you hear this voice. Leave him alone. We deserve what we're getting. He's done nothing wrong. Master, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And that wasn't the end of the dive of this little conversation. No, no. You've got to go one step further and listen to what the master said. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Don't you know he was? Don't you know that that man who hung on the cross crucified the same way as the master? When he got to paradise, don't you know he said, thank you, master. And doesn't that make you glad that you responded when your heartstrings were tugged? And you were asked if you would serve Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you said yes? And aren't you glad when you read those scriptures it says nothing can separate you from that love? Nothing. But what we're going to do, what my goal is in the Lenten season, is to try and look at these events, see our weaknesses, but see our strengths because of our trust and our faith. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Because you see, what happened on resurrection morning was told in the words of Christ. He told them what he was going to do. And they laughed. Even those who heard him and thought they believed in him. You remember Thomas? I can identify with him. Oh, yeah. Old York doubt or two. Thomas says, unless I see the nail scars in his hands, feel his fierce side, I will not believe. And just a short time later, as if Jesus, and he probably heard what Thomas says, come here Thomas, place your finger in my side. And you remember what he said? My Lord and my God. Blessed are those who have seen and believed. Blessed.
blessed even more are those who have not seen, yet they believe. Welcome, children. That's us. That's each one of us. And nothing can take it away from us. What a joy it is from the high country, from the mountain. Sometimes in the valley it's hard to see the mountaintop. Help us to keep trusting. Help us to keep our faith. Father, be with your child Holly says he struggles with his health, as with Sylvia as she sees him through these difficult times. Place your loving arms around both of them, Father. You know the great love that they have for you. Keep us all in your be with Pam and Jerome in their sorrow and in their grief. Strengthen and sustain them. And Father, as we go into the Lenten season, give us a new heart to know the Easter story in an even stronger way. To see the great love and sacrifice that was made by your own son on Friday see the great promise on resurrection morning. Thank you, Father, for revealing yourself to us through your Son, Jesus. Help us to know that his love for us can never be removed from us and that we're safe and secure in his arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 Absolut